The Ottawa Senators, um, I want to have a quick conversation about them because they came into the season with uh, expectations of potentially being a playoff team or being a, a playoff bubble team, and they haven't been great at all. They are currently a lottery team. They are 15th in the Eastern Conference, 65 games played, a 28-33-4 record with 60 points. Uh, they're only three points up on the Blue Jackets for last in the Eastern Conference, and everything that could have possibly went wrong. wrong that could have possibly went wrong for the Ottawa Senators has gone wrong. Um, and their only bright spots have really been Stutzla, Kachuk, and Giroux. And uh, Jake Bratterson has been good. But outside of those four players, hasn't been great. The defense has been absolutely atrocious. You're getting no production defensively or offensively out of those guys. You're expecting guys like Chabot and Chikorin and Sanderson to produce offensively. They haven't haven't really been doing that. Chikrin has been a major disappointment. Shabbat might be the most overpaid player in the league. And Sanderson, he has time to grow. It's only his second full season, so we'll give him a break, but he still hasn't played great this season. But again, his second season as a NHL defenseman, he has a ton of time to grow. Victor Hedman didn't become a superstar until his fifth, sixth NHL season. So again, uh, development is key. Give him some time, but like the Senators' goaltending has been some of the worst, if not the worst in the league. I know we said it, and the before this season, Port Brasalo was given a massive contract, and it has been absolutely horrible, and we did not like it from the start. I mean, looking up and down this team, I think they have a solid, like, young core forwards. You know, we all know Brady could chuck how good he is. Tim Stutzla is great. I like Jake Batherson. I think he's a bit of an underrated player there. Um, I don't think, uh, I think, I think he's better than a lot of people give him credit for. Uh, but their yeah. biggest issue is that their, their defense isn't really good at playing defense, and... That's not the biggest issue in the world when you have a young team like the Senators do. Yeah. When you have a goaltender. They do not have a goalie. And, you know, Corpusalo and Forsberg have been liabilities for them in almost every game this year. You can't rely on them to win you a game. And, you know, that that's the difference between, you know, young teams, you know, stepping up and you know, taking those next steps is if they can't rely on a goalie, then they, they, their confidence is kind of shot. Like, they make one mistake, and they, the goalie lets in an easy shot, and you're like, well, well fuck. Like, what, am I, what more can I do? I want to ask you guys a question here, because we all know, obviously, that Shane Pinto was suspended for um, half the season because of betting. So if Shane Pinto doesn't get suspended, um, and he's in the lineup for most of the season, barring any injuries, whatever, if he's completely healthy, is this a different season for the Senators? And I'm not saying that they're going to be competing for a playoff spot, but I'm just saying they're not going to be as bad as they are now. But, I mean, like, <clears throat> the goaltending hasn't helped at all. Shane Pinto has 19 points in 24 games, so if he realistically plays 75 games, he's probably up there trying to get 60, 65 points at that pace. I don't think this is any of a different season with Shane Pinto in the lineup. I no, think, I don't think so I think no, I think that it's not a different season in terms of making the playoffs like we all thought they were going to or they were going to be close to. I think it's a different season in terms of instead of having 28 wins right now, maybe they have what 30, 31, 32. It's a little bit of a difference, but I don't think like their goaltending has been so atrociously bad like it doesn't matter who you have on this team. If you don't have good goaltending, you're not going to have a chance to sniff the playoffs. Like, like Corpus Allo and Forsberg, okay, like, you can't get a single save out of them. They're letting in some soft stuff from, like, the blue line that should be easily savable, and they haven't been getting any stops like that, let alone making grade A scoring opportunity saves when you need them to. Like, you look at the elite teams in the league, they get saves from their goaltenders. The Ottawa Senators don't. And on paper, their team is good. However, though, when you're getting goaltending with 890 save percentage stats and the goals against of 3.2 and 3.3, it's not a recipe for success. So I think that's where everything went wrong. Um, obviously, they fired their coach halfway through the season. But, I mean, hasn't been it hasn't been great. So hopefully they uh, make some moves here in the offseason when, uh, when it comes up in a couple months. And we'll see what well, happens with them. But. Well, the, the biggest problem with Ottawa for me right now is their, ca their, ca their cap situation because – they kind of got lucky that Shane Pinto had all that stuff happening with him with uh, the gambling because I don't think they would have been able to sign him if that didn't happen. Oh, and then you didn't... got Josh Norris, who's again out for the rest of the year with an injury. Might be Just... the worst contract in the league. Yeah, 
Yeah, you just called Thomas Shabbat the worst contract in the league, buddy. I said he was overpaid. Same, no. same thing. <laughs> you said he was yeah. the worst contract okay, in the league. Okay, okay. Well, we have the two worst contracts in the league. I mean, I don't think that I don't think they're at bad contracts when they play. I mean, there's definitely worse contracts, but uh um... Well, but Josh, but the only thing is that like Josh Norris, he's a hell of a player, but he just can't stay on the ice though. Like it's you're paying a guy to just be injured all season long. Like, okay, he played, he's 50, played games. fifty games this season, but like you like you're paying a guy that much money. You want to be able to have him for what 65, 70 plus game, probably seventy plus games a season. But I mean, he struggles with injuries um almost his entire career. So I mean, I when it comes to his performance on ice, sure the contract is good. I like the contract, but when it comes to staying on the ice, I don't like it. So that's where it kind of comes for like a thing. So I mean, but just like they have a lot of play. Pierre Dorian before he got fired, he was just giving everybody eight year mm-hmm. deals, eight year deals. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have no problem giving like Tim Stutzla or Brady Kachuk eight year deals. I mean, but they, they are not in a good cap situation right now. They have a lot of money. Like Jake Sanderson's cap hit goes from nine thousand nine hundred thousand dollars to eight million dollars next year, which is a, a, a big jump. I know, you know, he's a great young defenseman. You know, you know, he's probably going to be worth more than that down the road. But they don't really have a lot of money to spend in the offseason due to the cap situations. I mean, they're playing like depth players a lot of money, too, like. Uh, Matteo Joseph's getting paid, uh, you know, three million dollars. Batherson's getting five. Uh, you know, it doesn't really get better, and they're stuck with that Corpusalo contract now at four million a year for four more years after this. <laughs> you know, I don't really see it getting better for them next year unless they could find. A, I think one guy, one obvious guy that's probably going to be out of the picture in the offseason is probably going to be Chikrin. Because from what I've read, uh, the new GM and new ownership group is not a very big fan of him. That was a Pierre Dorian move through and through, and then they got the new ownership group come in, and then Pierre Dorian gets fired, and it sounds like he's probably going to get moved in the offseason. So that's about, that's about like $5 million coming off the books, but that doesn't fix the problem. You have to trade. I think Jacob Tricker, and that has to be one of your first moves, is to get rid of him and get that contract um, off the books. I mean, I don't think he's a bad player or anything. He just, I don't. He just doesn't fit the senator system. I, I just think that's the issue. I, you already have Sanderson and Shabbat. You're not. Yeah, they have too Shabbat. many of the same guys. Yeah, you have three defensemen that are practically the same player. You have Sanderson, who's your franchise defenseman. Shabbat's locked up. He's not going anywhere at eight million dollars a year. Chickering's at four point nine a year. So I think Chickering, while he still has some value to his name, just get rid of him or like maybe like it's even a cap dump where you just get a couple draft picks for him. You don't want to get fleeced in the trade where you get like a fourth or fifth round pick for him because i think he's worth more than that but i i do think you can get some some decent value for him i mean i could see them retaining salary i mean he's uh he, he has one year left on his mm-hmm. contract after this so i think if they made a move where they, they were willing to retain like 25 percent, i think that would be very salivating to a lot of contending teams like okay we'll give you a first round pick for him because you're going to retain salary cap so we get a, a, a good player like a good second pair defenseman at the a quarter like a well, uh, 25% off the books, and, you know, he's great for our depth. He's not the worst cap hit in the world. Like, they can make – I think they'd have a lot of suitors for him if they were willing to retain just a little bit. I do think – well, not I do think, but I'm looking at it, and Artem Zub right now is locked up for another – few seasons at 4.6 i don't i don't mind that uh i do think like going like i know we keep going back to the owner's court for solid contract that's gonna bite them in the ass for the next four seasons because without that i think they would be in decent shape like some of these contracts like we just talked about um trickering that's movable i think you can get something back for him zub at 4.6 isn't bad then you have batherson who is at 25 years old is at 4.9 um the next three four seasons i think that's a pretty good contract for him so like and then obviously stutz like chuck and drew are getting paid right now which i'm perfectly fine with so like they have long-term contracts uh most of them aren't as bad as what it looks sanderson right now i i get the contract doesn't look great now but they paid him for what he can do not what he has done so i think like in the long term that will work out for them right now it hasn't worked out but again seven more years left on it give give the kid a break um but I think this team isn't in a good spot short term. I think long term they're in a good spot if they can just chill out with the money and just realize like they're not gonna be a contender. Like don't spend your way out of a rebuild. You don't want to do that. Let these let these guys develop. Let them let them play, and you'll be fine. You have superstars and Stutz on Kachuk. So they're gonna get another, they're also gonna get another really good prospect in the system this year because they're probably gonna have definitely gonna have a top ten pick. They might have end up having a top five pick. Yeah. Uh, so another really good prospect coming into the pool, you know, 
you know, I, I feel for the Senators fans. Like we're all Sabres fans. We know what it's like to, you know, just be perpetually bad. And, you know, they had a couple of years when they, like, made some playoff runs. But, you know, ever since that conference final run, they've kind of fallen apart and have been one of the punching bags in the league for a while. So we, we feel your pain. If you stayed for the entire video, head over to our Spotify and Apple podcast for the full episode. Links are in the description, and we'll see you in our next video.